Friends, can you hear my microwave going? I've got an experiment for you with uh, three-ish things. Um, you're going to need a container, you're going to need some SALT salt, and you're going to need some water. Uh, we can practice measuring, but that's kind of um, an estimation. Um, I'm not going to give you an exact amount. I'm going to teach you some fancy words along the way. Um, because it's one of the things I used to love to do when I played. Now, I had a sealed mason jar that's a quart in size, but it doesn't have to be. It can be any glass you have at your house. I do recommend that it's nice and clean. Um, but, but, the fun stuff begins when the water starts to boil. You need supervision for this activity. Your big person needs to help you. It doesn't have to be boiling, but the hotter it is, uh, the more you can saturate or the more salt you can get in the water. So you want it nice and warm, but you can try it without boiling big people if you would like um, your little one to be most involved. So that'll be going off in just a minute, but the other things that you're gonna need um, to finish this experiment other than your salt is some kind of string. The string that I had around my house was like curling string for packages. Dental floss string works really well, but mine's waxed, and I'm not sure if that works, but you're welcome to try it if you've got it at your house, because we don't want you going out for anything. We want you to explore with things that you might be able to recycle or reuse. Um, and every now and then, um, I have something that I have to fix. So I have a spool of string. So this thread is what I'm going to use as soon as I can find the bottom part of it, which is probably in the needle. Yep, right at the top. I'm gonna pull off just a smidge. It's nice and thin, but my scissors are not here. So let me grab my scissors, because the last thing that you need is going to be something to give it a little bit of weight. So as it's getting dark, it's harder to see, or maybe it's just my eyes. But there should be a stopper that allows me to stop my string at the top. I'll work on that later, but I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna cut off, I want it to be about twice as big. So what I need in the middle of my string is something to give it a little bit of weight so it stays down. Doesn't have to, but if, if the string kind of floats, you don't get um, the crystals growing as well. So I went down looking for a washer and what I found first was a bolt. So a small size bolt will work. I found a wing nut. You haven't seen one of those, aren't those cool? And um, that would work because it too has a hole like a bolt, but a washer is just a circle, like so, nice and small, that will um, let my string do what it needs to do. So my microwave just beeped to tell me that my, um, my water was finished, and my puppies are reminding me they would like to come in. So say hello to Fonzie. Fonzie and Athena, we're going to let them in as soon as we get this setting because I'm holding hot water. I want to be safe and I don't want to um, have that there. I knotted my string so it made a loop and then I'm going to make one more loop. Folks, so I've got a couple inches. The idea is that it's long enough to go down but not so long that it touches. Can you bring my water back please? Remember that knife that I used for the Play-Doh? I'm going to use something like that to let it rest on top of the jar when we're done so that my crystals can grow. Thank you. Chris brought my water back and if you can see there is steam because it's really hot. Because it's so hot, you want to let um, a big person do this, the stirring and watching it cool. Uh, this will be an observation. This will be an observation experiment. Uh, because I've done this a couple of times, I'm gonna start off with a full cup of salt. That's something you can help your big person with this experiment measure. How long does it take to fill a full cup of salt? I started before I asked the question. So I'm gonna let it finish pouring. Are you counting with me? It's almost there but I'm using up some of that salt that was getting ready to expire too. This isn't something that we can eat when we're done, but there's going to be a part two as you practice measuring and safety. Sometimes science can be super sweet. I'm giving you a little hint. All right, so now I have one full cup. I'm not needing to use my knife again, but I'm gonna pour it in slowly. What did you notice happened to the water? 
Get really occluded or cloudy, right? Like so. And I'm gonna stir and stir and stir and stir. This is usually when I like to sing the alphabet song or maybe twinkle twinkle. I don't know a salt song, but maybe we can make one up. Salty, salty in the sky. Salty, salty, not in my pie. I had a relative that liked to eat cheese with their pie. I thought that was the silliest thing until I tried it. Sometimes different is great. As I'm stirring, there's still some sediment or some stuff, that salt on the bottom, but a lot less than there was. I'm doing a motion called whisking. Hotter the water, the more this dissolves. And the more you get to dissolve, the bigger the crystals end up growing. Have you ever had iced, can you hear the salt? If you've ever had iced tea at a restaurant that's cold and you add some sugar, you might hear a sound like this too. I'm using what's called an iced teaspoon because it's longer than my regular teaspoon. All right, I have a very saturated solution. I can't get any more to dissolve. I'm gonna pour very slowly. And I'm not going to pour the salt in, just the salt water. Anything that's left at the bottom, I'm going to let stay in that cup. Again, while this is a lot of fun, pouring is fun in the bathtub with nice cool water. Because this is warm water, I'm making sure my hands are at the top, pouring very slowly and carefully, but this is something your big person should be doing. Very, very slow, so I just have the salt still in the cup and the water in the quart container. The last part's really important because there's only a tablespoon or so left. So, the salt remains. The saturated salt water is pretty cloudy now. I'm going to take that washer with the string to see if I can grow some crystals. Now I can use my spoon, I can use um, my knife, something just to make it go across. A regular pencil works really well too. And I'm going to float it right across. Now when I did this in the science lab, sometimes we would attract things. So I um, would keep a lid on it too. So you can do that if you have like uh, just a piece of paper, you can put your lid on it. But I'm gonna put my lid underneath like as a base and I'm gonna set it in my window to see how long it might take before I see something happening. So the trick is, my prediction is, if you've done this um, with the directions that I've given you, you're going to see something happen too. But this isn't a shake, this isn't a test, this is an observation. We're going to observe with our eyes over a few days, since we won't be in school for a few days. All right, friends, um, if you're following this in Flipgrid, you'll see updated pictures in my responses too, and I'd love to see um, if you try to do this, what yours look like. I'm going to bring this into the classroom as well, and we're gonna do something a little different with um, a plastic container and some more salt, just because I have so much. So stay tuned, stay well, take care.